2014, we visited the St. Kilda Legal Service in Melbourne, Australia, and interviewed their lawyer, Wanda Hamilton, about the important work they do to help vulnerable communities. We are a community legal service that offers uh, free legal advice um, and information and also advocacy for uh, marginalised people, for people who um, are exploited. St Kilda Legal Service has been here for 40 years and it was just really a groundswell of um, young lawyers uh, and, and old lawyers too, I guess, who just said, look, you know, there's just no access to justice and um, was all voluntary at that time. It's grown over time so that now it's actually funded by government, although the base of our operations are still is still mostly volunteers. Which are the most vulnerable uh, populations or the groups of uh, society in Victoria? I would have to say homeless uh, um, and mentally ill people who also have other issues like drug and alcohol, homelessness, really anyone who has to use the streets for anything and that includes sex workers. Women with children uh, and also men with children who have been rendered homeless, so children are very vulnerable and that is, um, sadly, that's very common. And people who have experienced family violence uh, can also be very, very vulnerable. So last year, um, there was a homeless person murdered uh, under one of the bridges where homeless people stay a lot. Uh, last year one of our sex workers, um, street sex workers, was murdered. What kind of services do you provide for vulnerable people? Uh, so I do outreach, so I go out to see uh, people because I reach a lot of clients who wouldn't otherwise access uh, lawyers. And also of course that it's free, they don't have to fill out any forms. Um, quite often they're, uh, they're not eligible for legal aid anyway because they just don't fit into the guidelines. They would otherwise perhaps have to represent themselves in court. What are the typical cases when they are seeking your help? Um, quite often they're people who have come through the system because they are, say, homeless, and you're a lot more likely to get picked up if you're homeless. Uh, so, for instance, uh, quite often people are living in their cars and they, their licence has been cancelled for whatever reason. Um, and we have a, a number plate matching recognition system, so it's very easy to be picked up. You know, probably drive while unregistered and all those sorts of things. And then one of the other things that's really big for a lot of my clients is fines. They just accumulate an enormous amount, like thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of fines. And you can go to jail eventually. How many clients do you help uh, as, a, as an organisation a year? Oh, as an organisation, I think we see about um, 1,700 people, maybe 2,000 a year. Myself, I carry a load of about three or four hundred. I might have about a hundred files open at any time. What kind of legal problems drug users uh, are facing in, in Victoria? You know, people aren't going to get jailed if they keep on coming up with possession and use. But trafficking uh, is, is a problem because there's such a wide range of behaviours that is considered to be trafficking. So you can, you know, get a couple of extra ecstasy pills when you're getting something for you, you know, going out to a club at night, you sit down next to your mate, you say, here, do you want two pills? Please see, you. that's trafficking. You haven't got any money from them, you just offered it to him. That's trafficking. That's enormously harsh for people because it puts something on their criminal record that they're never going to get rid of. But the real problem for them just comes that drugs are criminalised. What law does criminalise drug use? When was it enacted and, uh, and uh, what are the penalties in the law? Heroin, cocaine, marijuana, as far as I know, they were all legal pretty much up to the 40s. Uh, and then along with America started being criminalised. Um, and uh, then of course as the new strains of drugs have come along, they've been criminalised pretty much as soon as people have realised. So ecstasy and, um, you know, methamphetamine and those sorts of drugs have uh, being criminalised pretty quickly. LSD took a while to be criminalised, I think it did in a lot of countries, for uh, a use and possession. The very first time that you're caught, you might get what's called a, um, a drug diversion. And so they don't actually take you into court. They say, okay, if you go and see a counsellor, and then 30 days later you go and see the counsellor again, and you give us proof that you've done it, that, mm, it will never show up on any record, and that's okay. Yeah, And there's a difference between you know, trafficking, selling a bit down the street, and commercial trafficking. So commercial trafficking is 
something else again and that has to go up to the higher courts and clearly there's much um, more uh, significant sentences involved with that but I don't deal with people who do commercial trafficking that's for the big lawyers yeah how is the access to our election services in Victoria for drug users I think it's quite good I mean there's an overall uh, expectation that harm reduction is uh, the main priority um, of um, what we do with drug, drug issues in, in Victoria. There's access to needle exchanges, there's access to being able to dispose of your, um, of your fits, there's you know, needle disposal units. and that, That's just uh, about saying, okay, uh, the public perception that um, syringes are a danger. They don't like seeing syringes around. That leads to um, uh, drug users being uh, abused and marginalised and, you know, a lot of concern about drug using. So how about you just get rid of them responsibly and then uh, perhaps we don't have to deal with so many calls to ban drug users and we can deal with harm reduction. So you'll usually find uh, syringe disposals in public toilets, most public toilets have them. In fact, I don't think I've ever been to a public toilet that doesn't. Um, outside buildings like this, um, you'll find them. Uh, anywhere that's a sort of a public service or building. Anywhere where people might go to actually inject or might come because they're an injecting drug user. So they might carry the, it around with them and, until they get to a, a safe disposal unit. And, and the police are, are committed to harm reduction as well. They understand that you know, that's, that makes their policing probably easier. There's also, this is one of the places where there's a trial of um, naltrexone um, uh, giving the naltrexone to users and to their families and friends, not to workers, but uh, people who are intimately involved. And uh, there's training programs running for those people with a doctor. And then as part of that, you get your first um, kit. How do you think what would be the ideal drug legislation in terms of drug users? Oh, as far as I'm concerned, just total um, decriminalisation of everything. I mean, I, I just think it, 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 it's totally absurd to have people who are otherwise good, upstanding citizens, or have the possibility of being, uh, thrown into the criminal system because their, their choice of drug isn't approved of by society. It should be a health issue, it should never be a legal issue. I think that over the past, I don't know, maybe 15 or 16 years, I just sense a hardening in people. People have become very insular and they've become very judgmental um, about other people. It's You don't get a sense that people understand that, well, that could be me or that could be my children. Um, it's, it's very much this thing of, you put yourself there, you get yourself out. Why should we help you out, you know? Why should we spend taxpayers' payers money? Um, and anyway, just go to jail. Like, you know, that's the best kind of thing to get you off drugs. A lot of the harms that come to people from drugs aren't actually necessarily about their health. When we talk about drugs, we're always talking about people in crisis. Really, is there are a lot of functioning drug users. We never hear from them. They don't have a voice. They're too scared to say they're functioning drug users. Um, society doesn't want to hear that there are people who are functioning drug users because that's not the dominant narrative about drug use. Um, but there are. You might get over all your health issues. You might never even have health issues from having taken drugs. Uh, but you, your priors, your, your criminal history is going to follow you around for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm.